Hi, today we are going to talk about how to recover from VRS once it grabs the helicopter. While it's better to avoid it altogether, being prepared for it anyway is important. Another crucial point to remember is to attempt recovery as soon as possible, because doing so will minimize the loss of altitude. For the following demonstrations, I'll be using Gazelle at maximum gross weight. Acting on the first instinct to just pull on the collective in order to overpower the VRS would be a mistake. One source I found claims that for it to work, you'd need to have twice the power needed for hover. Here, I was barely keeping in the air at 94% of torque, so not much extra left, which makes the result quite predictable. Since applying maximum power won't work, let's try to go the other way and outdive the VRS. It works by using the gravity to pull the helicopter from messy vortex ring into streamlined autorotation airflow, then grabbing some airspeed and leveling off. Much better, but it requires having sufficient height and free airspace, which limits its usefulness for emergencies in confined spaces. For such cases, there is another method developed by Claude Vouchard. It relies on keeping the power up to minimize the loss of altitude, and it uses tile rotor thrust to help with pushing the helicopter sideways into clean air. Since there is no need for accelerating to dive speeds, this type of recovery also needs much less space to be performed. Tile rotor thrust direction depends on the direction of rotation of the main rotor, which means you have to take that into account and move the controls accordingly. Just observe main rotor blades during startup and know the direction the helicopter wants to drift to in a hover. Gazelle wants to drift to the left, which means recovery needs to be done towards the left side as well. Main rotor turns to the right, so the right pedal is going to be used during recovery. Let's see how that works in practice. Here I am attempting a dynamic stop into observation position and things developed so fast that I went already through all three VRS warning signs before I was able to react. Even though I am behind the curve, I recognize the danger and I immediately transition to recovery. Maximum allowable power, right pedal in as much as practical and bank to the left to accelerate exit from the vortex. As soon as the descent is arrested, I stop the sideways movement and transition to hover. During this attempt, I lost only 64 feet of altitude from the point of recovery initiation to the hover. At the height of only 48 feet above ground level, vertical speed peaked at 1700 feet per minute and I was still able to arrest it. Maximum lateral speed peaked at 18 knots which, while helped with getting a bit of extra lift, was still beyond ETL. Horizontal distance covered during the recovery was 140 feet, which is 4 main rotors diameters. There are two important notes to make here. The first one is, use the collective and the right pedal in a sensible manner. Too much collective pulled up too fast, most likely is going to slip the clutch between the engine and the main gearbox, and a sudden loss of thrust is the last thing needed now and even at the maximum power, the right pedal still has enough authority to initiate a turn to the right. Use it as much as you can, but stay on heading. The second point is, during the recovery, the helicopter might clamp a little bit, as it catches more and more transitional lift during sideways movement. Lowering the collective now might cause a contact with the ground. It's better to arrest the ascent by transitioning to hover, which will kill ETL, then adjust power for level hover. Thanks for watching and see you next time.